Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. And we're getting back to work on the drive shaft for the KT. Or should I say the test drive shaft that I'm machining in Delrin. Where we last left this, the setup itself hasn't changed, but I've altered where I've placed the dial indicators for the table and the knee, or should I say the saddle and the knee. They're back here behind the table. They'll be a lot more out of the way instead of being on the table or in front of me and out of any potential danger that I might knock them out of kilter, which would screw everything up. So right now I've got the cutter at zero and zero, which is the center line of the shaft and touching the top of it. Now I'll need to cut two parallel grooves down the shaft as it's oriented here to start forming the splines. Well, since this first piece is going to be in Delrin, I shouldn't have any problems doing a full depth of cut. So I'm going to take it all in one chunk. When I go to cut the 1045, I'll probably split this up into two, maybe three passes. This first cut, I've got the table, the saddle rather, pushed away 281 thousandths and I've got the knee raised 117 thousandths. <laughs> Since this is Delrin, again, I think I can cut this pretty fast, so we're running at 480 RPM, and I think the power feed's at 5.5 inches per minute. I still have to do the calculations on what that should be once I start cutting the 1045. Well, with the first cut now complete, I need to do this five more times. So we'll come over here to the dividing head and we will rotate it, the handle that is six times plus 10 holes on the 15 hole pattern. With the shaft rotated to the next spot, we can go ahead and turn on the spindle and engage the power feed.
And just as before, we will spin the handle six full rotations and then plus 10 holes to get to the next index. Well, that's the sixth cut for this first round, and I'm going to go ahead and index the shaft back to the start. For the next operation, it's going to be a repeat of what we just did. However, we need to offset the milling cutter 281 thousandths on the other side of the center of the shaft. With the milling cutter now positioned on the opposite side of the center of the shaft, we'll be repeating what we just did, taking six passes down the length of the cut, rotating the dividing head between each run. Doing a little comparison with my 3D printed facsimile, it certainly looks like the width of the spline matches. I'll take a couple of seconds here to try to clean off some of these little Delrin burrs, if you want to call it that, that are stuck on the edges just to see a little better what I'm working with. I want to go back to the zeros, my Y and Z zeros, so I'll bring the milling cutter so it's center of the shaft and bring the knee back down to where it's just at the touch off point with the milling cutter. Well those first two passes down the shaft left this triangular feature in the center. Now I can't just mill a flat across there because the cutter is a quarter of an inch wide and that space between the two splines is a little bit smaller than that so I have to be a little more creative so the first thing I need to do is rotate the shaft 36 degrees and it just so happens with a 40 to 1 dividing head that means rotating the handle here four times now to get the cutter in the correct position I need to move the saddle away from me 61 thousandths and I need to raise the knee 99 thousandths. When I originally did these calculations I looked at this thing completely wrong and actually had those numbers grossly inflated and when I originally moved 
the cutter into the spot where I thought it was supposed to be and looked down the length of the shaft I knew it was wrong I went back and looked at the drawings again and realized where I had made a mistake I do have a tendency to use CAD to do most if not all of these kinds of calculations for me but of course that doesn't matter if you're not looking at the print correctly like I mentioned the reason why I have to do this strange setup is because the cutter is a quarter of an inch wide which is wider than the space between the splines whatever that's called the valley I'm not sure what that's called and I could have used a thinner milling cutter but unfortunately I didn't have one so this is what I had to work with at the time that I was filming this. Okay, double, triple check, everything's in the correct position. I can go ahead and turn on the spindle and make this first cut to take out that uh, little peak in the valley. Now with that second series of cuts made, I now need to rotate the shaft back, not just the 36 degrees, but an additional 36 degrees, so a total of 8 turns for 72 degrees of rotation. Now I need to go ahead and move the cutter so it is 61 thousandths on the other side of the center of the shaft. Well, just as before, we'll do this six times, rotating the dividing head to the next index between each cut. Well, that's it. Uh, do a little cleanup here and get rid of some of these Delrin chips off of the table. We can take the shaft out here and examine it.
So now the question is, did I do this right? Did I have the math correct? Did I design this correctly? Did I rotate this thing correctly? Where did I screw up? Let's take a little closer look at this. Taking a little closer look at it, it certainly looks like a spline shaft. It doesn't appear that any of the splines are different thickness than the others, so I must have rotated the indexing head the correct number each time. And our 3D printed sample seems to match up with the splines and the valleys as I would expect if I did everything correctly, but that's not the important test. The important test is will this splined gear fit over the spline shaft? Well, and that gear fits on there really nice. That slides on there smooth. There's no binding. So I must have done something right or got really lucky. But even a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and again. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Now the question is, do I make a test piece out of 1045 or do I jump in and just make the real thing? Well, I'm not sure I have an answer to that question just yet, but I do know one thing that before I move forward, I'm going to need to fix the alignment between the dividing head and the footstock. So I think before I start making cuts on this piece of 1045, I'm going to make some new table keys for the footstock and the dividing head and do a little pre-work to make sure that they are lined up horizontally from center to center. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It does help out the channel more than you could think. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button so you can see what happens with this thing next. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.